Hey everyone, I had a bit of computer problem last week, but at least I'm not the government, so it cost me less than £100 million to fix it. And unlike many politicians, I didn't get a visit from the police asking about the hard drive's contents. But at least this week we finally have something to talk about other than coronavirus. Yes, it's a return to Brexit, which as any BBC panel show contestant would tell you, sounds a bit like a breakfast cereal, and which many viewers would thus interpret as a sign that they were yet again watching a repeat on Dave. You know, the thing with repeats on Dave is that QI stops being quite interesting once you've heard Stephen Fry witter on about it for the third or fourth time. But anyway, something we have heard three or four times is that Boris is going to, quote, get Brexit done. And so this week saw the inevitable raising of eyebrows and keyboards being smashed as the government took the inevitable step of reneging on past promises regarding Ireland, which is hardly a surprising turn of events given the past five centuries. In this case, it specifically relates to a promise made to keep unified trading laws in Northern and Southern Ireland. Keeping that status quo would, in effect, make Northern Ireland a de facto EU state going forward, given that the Republic of Ireland's laws regarding trade and customs are dictated to them by Brussels. London would lose control of Northern Ireland, in much the same way that John DeLorean did when the FBI knocked on his door. Thus, the only two options are A, splitting Northern Ireland from British control, not going to happen, or B, agreeing that the two places will in future be subject to different rules, you know, like two different countries. Goodness. Goodness knows what's going to happen when someone realises that Guinness is owned and controlled by Diageo, which has its stock market listing in London, not Brussels or Frankfurt. Anyway, the expression being branded by the BBC is, quote, breaking international law. And that's curious in two main respects. One, it happens all the time, notoriously by EU countries, yet most notably in the last kind of couple of decades by Tony Blair, who invaded Iraq illegally not long after he agreed that very Northern Ireland treaty in question. From here to zero in less than it takes to get a spray tan. Number two, the concept of international law here implies that there's an international court or jurisdiction to which the UK needs to answer. Where is it? Strasbourg? The truth is that international law is here a synonym for EU law, and that kind of gets the crux of it. If a European court passes judgment, then whether the UK actually complies with it or not is up for grabs, especially the trade agreement on the table. And the EU's member states very keen to continue selling wine and cars to Britain without some kind of block in place. The Northern Ireland troubles were a terrible time, everyone agrees with that, but two decades on there's really no demand for a renewed armed uprising, not least over Brexit. Ironically, in an era of violent looting and peaceful protests being all the rage, Belfast is one of the few places in the Western world without any racial or religious or sectarian violence. 2020 is indeed a strange place. Perhaps I should place £50 in West Ham to win the Premiership. Stranger things have happened after all. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.